Hello, everyone. Welcome to the CNCF webinar on Kubernetes policy exceptions with Kiverno. Before we get started, a little introduction about myself. I'm Anusha Hegde. I'm the technical product manager at Nirmata. Nirmata is the creator of Kiverno. Previously, I've worked at VMware. I've worked on vSphere SDKs and Tanzu Kubernetes Grid for Edge. I started my OSS journey back in 2020 or early 21 with Cluster API. I was also the maintainer of Cluster API provider for Bring Your Own Host. And recently, I'm also working with the Policy Working Group. This is our agenda for today. I'm sure most of you all know what Kiverno is, but for the benefit of everyone, we'll have a quick overview of Kiverno. What are policies in Kubernetes? What is the need for policy exceptions and how Kiverno enables policy exceptions? We'll also look at the demo of policy exceptions in Kiverno. And in the end, we'll also talk about what's next for Kiverno and policy exceptions. All right, let's get started. This is the basic architecture for Kiverno. Any Kubernetes API request goes through the API request lifecycle. First, you have the authentication and authorization. And then if any webhooks are registered, the API request is routed through these webhooks before persisting into HCD. There are two types of admission controls in Kubernetes. One is the mutating admission control. The other is validating admission control. Mutating admission control, as the name suggests, has the capability to mutate incoming API requests. And validating admission control can allow requests to persist into HCD or not. Given no access both mutating admission control and validating admission controls. At the heart of it, it is a rule processing engine. Since Kiverno is Kubernetes native, everything in Kiverno is governed by CRDs and controllers. All the yellow boxes you see around here are custom resource definitions. And Kiverno itself is split into multiple controllers that are responsible for different behaviors, such as we have a controller for the policy reporting, a control for background scanning, and so on. Kiverno also provides a comprehensive CLI to detect misconfigurations in your Kubernetes manifest as early as possible. You can use the CLI in your CICD pipeline, which can help to detect misconfigurations much earlier in the deployment lifecycle. Before diving into how a Kiverno policy looks like, let's understand what are policies in Kubernetes. Policies in general are a set of rules that define how resources should be configured and behave in a cloud native environment. These policies ensure compliance, security, and efficiency. YAML is pretty much a standard format for writing Kubernetes manifests, and Kiverno also enables you to write policies and rules using YAML. Every policy in Kiverno is composed of one or more rules. Each rule has a match and exclude block. This is to filter on resources on which a certain policy and rule has to be applied. You can match and exclude on any of these. It could be resource kinds, names, labels, annotations, and so on. There are four different types of rules, validate, mutate, generate, and verify images. Validate based on some pattern matching in the rule either evaluates to true or false. Mutate, as the name suggests, is to mutate the incoming request. Generate helps you create resources on the fly based on certain triggers. And verify images is used for verifying image signatures and attestations. This is a sample cluster policy. The validation failure action is set to enforce. It means if the rule evaluation evaluates to false, then this particular request will be dropped and not persisted into HCD. There is another option possible called the audit mode. And next we have one rule in this policy. It is matching on resource kind pod. It follows the validate rule type. This is one of the four that we discussed. This rule checks that an image tag is required, but latest is not allowed. So here we match on the pod spec containers image, and we say the exclamation stands for negation. Negation of star in regular expression indicates any image. So any image that ending in colon latest is not allowed. So if your pod tries to pull an image, something like Nginx colon latest, that pod will be blocked by the admission control. This is a simple validate rule policy, but writing mutate, generate, and verify images is also just as simple. Kiverno has an extensive policy library. This policy library con consists of 
close to 300 policies as of date. So please take a look. Now that we know what given policies are and how they are implemented, you might wonder that under certain special circumstances, you might want to deviate from a certain policy rule. We saw that match exclude block allows filtering of resources, but from this diagram, as you can see, match and exclude is part of the policy itself. Here we match on resource kind for, or we could exclude from certain resources, but we have to define that upfront at the time of writing this policy. Now this might become limiting if the policies are not directly editable. And it is indeed a security best practice to not allow edits to your policies. And oftentimes in organizations, policies are defined by a central security team and policies are authored by this team. And different application teams that are responsible for deployments will need different kinds of exclusions. An exclusion for one team may not be applicable to some other team. Hence, it becomes difficult to define all the exclusions in that central policy. Policy exceptions in Kiveno addresses all of these concerns because it is applied externally to a policy. This also leads to increased collaboration between teams. It is always a good practice to review a policy exception before deploying and acknowledge the risks involved. And exceptions are generally intended to be short-lived. So you can provide temporary exceptions to policies by combining with yet another powerful feature of Kiverno called the cleanup policies, which allows the cleanup of resources in the cluster. And in this case, the policy exception itself is the resource. So how policy exceptions are implemented in Kiverno? Let's look at this flow diagram. Suppose say a validate policy exists in enforce mode and the webhook receives a violated resource. Without policy exception in place, because this is a violating resource and the validate policy is in enforce mode, this resource should be blocked. That is, it should not be allowed to persist into HCD. But now what if a matching policy exception exists? If it exists, then the resource is allowed, even though this is a violating resource. But if the policy exception did not exist, then as expected, this resource is blocked. So this feature was introduced in Kiverno 1.9 release. Like everything in Kiverno, policy exception is a custom resource. It is a namespaced custom resource. You have to specify the policy and rule name that needs exceptions. And you can also use match and exclude blocks to filter on resources. Policy exceptions are supported in background scanning as well. The effect is that the policy report now reports as a skip instead of a failure whenever policy exceptions are present. Now let's take a look at the demo. For this demo, I have a local kind cluster. I have a single node client cluster, single node kind cluster that's ready to go. I've also installed Kiverno. I've installed Kiverno 1.9.5 release. Also, it is important to note that the Kiver in the Kiverno deployment, you have to enable policy exception to true. By default, uh, the setting is set to false. So if you want to use policy exceptions, you have to set this flag to true. Also, another important flag here is the exception namespace. So by default, this is set to Kiverno. It means you have to define all your policy exceptions in this namespace. Even though policy exceptions are defined in this namespace, it is applicable to accept resources in any other namespace. It is generally a good practice to define all your exceptions together in one namespace so that you're aware of what exceptions are present in your cluster. Now that we have our environment ready, let's look at our Kubernetes manifest. First, let's look at the policy itself. So here I have a cluster policy, disallow host namespaces. The validation failure action is set to enforce. The rule name is host namespaces. It matches on resource kind pod and the rule type is validate. So here it matches on this pattern spec. It says if any of these fields that is host PID, host IPC or host network is present, it should be set to false. Either it should not be present or if present should be set to false and no other value. 
let's apply this policy. Policy is created. Let's take a quick look. Yes, now our disallow host namespaces is ready. Let's look at our deployment YAML. So here I have a deployment and in the spec, we see that host IPC is set to true. So this is violating the policy rule mentioned here. I have host IPC field, but it is not set to false. It is set to true. Now, if I try to apply this deployment, Kiverno should block this resource because it is a violating resource. Let's try that. So as you can see, uh, error from error when creating deployment YAML, admission webhook has denied the request. And why it has denied? Because these fields, if present must be unset or set to false, but we have uh, we have a host IPC set to true. If I get all the deployments, we see that it is not created, it is blocked by the admission controller. For folks new to Kiverno, you might wonder that we have a rule called autogen host namespaces. And also another point to note is in my cluster policy, my match resource kind is spot, whereas the resource is for deployment. So Kiverno is intelligent enough to determine the higher order controllers for pod. So generally, you don't create a pod yourself. It is usually via a higher order controller, like a deployment or a stateful set and so on. So Kiverno has the ability to generate rules for these higher order controllers, even though the policy states for matching resource kind pod. So the rule name here was host namespaces and Kiverno automatically generates rules for higher order controllers like deployment. And the rule name is called autogen host namespaces. And that is what we see here. Autogen host namespace, this rule has failed. So autogen host namespaces is applicable for deployment. So even though the policy was for a pod, and the resources of deployment, the rule is still applicable. And now we'll see how policy exceptions can help us to bypass this rule and allow this deployment to be created. So let's look at our policy exception. Like everything in Kiverno is a custom resource, policy exception is also a custom resource. Called Delta exception, the policy exception itself is defined in the Kiverno namespace. And now we'll see for what policies and rules this exception is applied. So we have this exceptions block wherein we specify that this allow host namespaces is my policy name. And for what rules, host namespaces is what we originally defined in our policy. And autogen host namespaces is what Kiverno generated for higher order controllers. It is by choice that Kiverno does not auto generate policy exceptions exception for higher order controllers as well. It is because it is always a good practice to limit the scope of your policy exception. So you have to always explicitly state for what rules you want exception for. And similarly in uh, match resource kind, you don't just say pod here. You also say for which higher order controller you want this rule to be accepted. And then we say in this namespace delta and also the resource name starting with an important tool. Let's apply this exception. When this exception is created, we can take a look. So we have Delta exception in the Kiverno namespace, which is ready to go. Now, if I apply my deployment again, I should be able to do so because we already have a policy exception in place. Yes, our deployment got created. This is because even though the deployment spec was a violating resource, because of this policy exception is present, it allows you to bypass that violation and the deployment gets created. That's it for the demo. Thank you. Coming back to our presentation. So what we have learned today, we learned about policy exceptions and how they provide an external way to specify exclusions to policies and rules. While powerful, their use has to be carefully reviewed and limited in scope because we saw how it can admit violating resources.
combined with other features such as cleanup policies to ensure security while still being flexible. Get involved in our project. So we are on GitHub at Kiverno slash Kiverno. So if you like our project, do give us a star. We are on Kubernetes Slack and CNCF Slack on the channel called Kiverno. We have a thriving community of over 2,000 people. We have a weekly contributor meeting and also the good first issues are listed on the GitHub project. And these are some of the references I used in today's webinar. Thank you.